Hey everyone, welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense game in Unity tutorial. In this short video, we're just going to show how to add physics and collisions to your game objects. Let's get started. Now before we put those physics right in, a quick note on graphics and resolutions. This tower here is just not quite looking right. Its pixels are a little bit smaller than the other objects in my scene. And the reason for that is that it was made on a 24 by 24 grid, as opposed to my characters, which are 32 by 32. This can actually be fixed quite easily by clicking on the tower, going to the sprite editor where we can change our pixels per unit to match. Then hit apply. Already it's looking much better. I can now go into scene view, move it into place, and it now matches my characters and scene a lot better. With that done, we're ready to get our robot interacting with the world. Just a couple notes on hierarchy setup when you're dealing with NPCs or enemies. I always like to keep my physics separate from my visuals as sometimes animations can cause problems with movement in physics. So I'm just gonna right click in the hierarchy here. I'm going to go to create empty. I'm just gonna make a parent object, which I'll call robot. I'll then grab the sprite that we inputted earlier, drag it onto robot to make it a child. And that's where any animations will happen, while the robot parent object is where we'll handle our movement and collisions. All right, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna actually apply some physics. So let's click on the robot as the parent object is where we're going to do all of our physics. We're gonna head over to our inspector and add a new component. In this case, we're gonna add something called a rigid body 2D. It is absolutely important that you use the 2D version and this will add a new component. Rigid body is how Unity processes physics and it lets us play with things like the mass and gravity scale of our objects. If I were to play the game right now, my enemy would just drop right off the face of the earth. Now there's a couple of different things we can do here. We could play with mass. This is a metric measurement here. So if you wanted certain objects to push harder on others, you could increase this. We can also play with gravity scale. A value of zero, for example, would be no gravity at all. For now though, we'll just leave this with the default settings. Now the reason the enemy was falling off the earth is because while he has physics, there's nothing for him to collide with. And so we're gonna click add component. And at this point, if you type in collider, you'll get a whole bunch of choices. And there's two problems I wanna warn you about here. First of all, a lot of people wanna add a really complex collider so they'll use a polygon with many edges. Though you'll notice as soon as I added mine that there's something wrong with my positioning. I'll just remove my sky for a moment here and you'll notice that the polygon collider is not appearing anywhere near my robot. It's actually off to the side. This will sometimes happen when adding a sprite as a child of another object where they just get separated. It's a pretty easy fix. You just need to click on the sprite itself, head over to your inspector and zero out all of your position numbers. That should get things centered nicely. Now, as I mentioned before, often people want to use a polygon collider as it allows you to edit it and make it fit all of the contours of your enemy. However, you really don't need this level of specificity and it puts more strain on Unity and it also creates some strange physics interactions because of the weird angles. So I actually prefer to just use a box collider 2D. Again, make sure you click the 2D version. At this point, you can click Edit Collider and just resize it however you like. I like to make mine just a tiny bit smaller than the actual shape as there's nothing worse than getting damaged by an enemy that you got close to. If you want, you can add extra colliders. You could put one specifically for the wheel, but this looks good for our purposes. At this point, if I were to play the game, he would still fall through the ground because our ground doesn't have a collider. So let's head over to our hierarchy, click on the grid, and we're just going to select ground. Now there's a couple ways we could handle this. We could just add component, put a box collider on it, and shape it up to fit our ground, which would work, but that would also mean we'd have to adjust it every time we change our tile set. A much easier answer is to add a tile map collider 2D instead. You'll notice that it makes a square that perfectly fits all of the grid in this layer. The beauty of this is that as we add new pieces, it automatically maps to cover those, so we don't need to adjust our tile map collider. Now one little problem with this is you'll notice with all of these squares that there is the potential for on these lines in between the squares for the box of our enemy to actually get caught and this will happen sometimes. So an easy way to fix that is to add something called a composite collider. Now if we go up to our tile map collider 2D you'll notice that there is a used by composite box. We can click that and now all those little squares went away and our collider just nicely maps right to the outer edge of our tile map. Just to warn you, if you play your game at this point, the ground will literally be falling. And that's simply because when we added the composite collider, we told Unity that we want physics on our ground. So it added a rigid body. This gives it gravity, which we don't want. The easy way to fix that is just go up to body type here. And rather than dynamic, we're just gonna set this to static. And now our ground will stay put. 
Now if I were to enter play mode and stay in scene view, I can check and it looks like our physics are working just fine. Now it's bothering me a little that this robot's facing the wrong way, so I'm just going to click on the parent object and change our scale x to negative 1. That'll just turn him around. Alright, we're ready to actually get this robot moving, so I'm just going to leave play mode. Now you'll notice that when I did that, my changes did not get saved, so I'm just going to put him back to negative 1 once more. I'll just close up these panels to keep things clean. And with that done, we've added physics and collisions to our enemy object. We're ready to get him moving now, but I'll save that for the next video. Until that time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.